All right, problem number one says, Cheyenne has $40 in her bank account. She adds $5 from her allowance to the account every week. Write a linear equation that can give the balance of her account Y, and given the number of weeks she has added money from her allowance, we call that X. How much money will be in her account in six weeks or after six weeks? So there's really two questions here. The first part is, here's a bunch of information, write down an equation, Y equals MX plus B, some kind of equation of a line. And then the second part where it says how much money will be in her account after six weeks, that is a prediction. We use the equation to predict what's going to happen you know, after six weeks in the future, or how much money she'll have, or something like this. So the best way to approach this is to kind of write down what you know. And it's told to us in the first part of the problem that the variable y is the balance, right? And the variable x, this is the number of weeks that she is saving for. So the problem says, how much do you have after six weeks? Well, x is going to represent the number of weeks. So let's just try to take a stab at it. We're trying to write an equation for the amount of money she has. So we're gonna call that y, and it's gonna be equal to some stuff that we're gonna calculate. So when we read the problem, it says she has $40 in her bank. She adds more money to it every week. So basically you're starting with a known amount. Even after zero weeks, when no time has passed, she starts with $40. So we need to say that the total balance in her bank account is actually starting at $40, but we're gonna add to that more money. How much more money? She adds $5 from her allowance every week. But we just said that the number of weeks uh, that she is adding money to the, uh, her account is represented by the variable X there. So if she adds $5 every week, it's five times X. So for instance, after one week, she adds five more dollars. After two weeks, five times two is 10, she's adding $10. After three weeks, three times five is 15, you add to this and you get a, you know, a, 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 a 15 additional dollars and so on. So as time goes on, the number of weeks goes up and up and up and we add all of this money to what she was starting with, right? Now this is the equation of a line, but we usually don't write it this way. We usually write it as mx plus b, 5x plus 40. This is the equation of the line that represents the situation, 5x plus 40. Now it says how much after six weeks? So we let x, the number of weeks, equal to six. So then the balance is gonna be five times six if we let x equal to six. What is going to happen? Five times six is of course 30 plus 40. So then the amount, the total balance is $70 in that case. And this is the final answer. So we could stop here and we could say, okay, we learned a skill, we write an equation, we plug in a number and we calculate something. But you know, I don't wanna go get too far down into the weeds and do, do too much graphing here for the word problems, but I do want to take the opportunity to do a little sketch because the whole point of these things is to help you visualize what's really going on. We now know how to graph these equations of a line. So let's just go over here and we're just gonna sketch it. We're not gonna do it on a, on a beautiful chart. It's not gonna be accurate. You know, it's not gonna look, you know, to scale or anything like that, but we'll still get an idea. What is the y-intercept of this line? It's 40, right? So let's say this is, you know, 10, this is 20, this is 30, and this is 40. So it's very big. Well, the y-intercept is way up here at 40, something like this. And what's the slope? The slope is five, that means rise over run is five. That means I go up five and over one. So I'm, I can't draw it to scale, but it's gonna go up five over one. It's gonna be something like this will be the next point and the next point will be something like this. And so the line is actually gonna go something like this, something like this. So you see what's going on? What it's telling you, the x, the x direction here is the number of weeks she is saving you can't really be saving for a negative number of weeks. So you can kind of ignore the left-hand side of this line here because that's negative time. But as time starts from zero and goes one and two and three and four and five and six weeks into the future, you can see the total amount of money goes up, up, up in her bank account. But even when time is zero, the y-intercept of 40 means she starts at $40. And that's an important thing. That's something that I want to impress upon you now because also when you get to calculus and even advanced calculus, that idea of what is the value at the beginning 
at the, when time is equal to zero, that's a really important concept that you're never gonna stop using. Even when you solve very complex problems later on the road, that's called an initial condition, okay? The initial condition in this problem is that when she starts, even before she starts saving any additional money, she starts with $40. It doesn't say it's an initial condition, but it says Cheyenne has $40 in her bank, and then she adds more. The initial condition in this case is where the graph crosses the y-axis, because if you, uh, the number of weeks is zero weeks, that means you haven't even really started saving additional money, you already have an initial value, an initial condition of $40 in the bank. And just keep that term in the back of your mind because as we get into physics and calculus later on, initial conditions are huge. You have to know the initial conditions to solve most problems, okay? So, makes sense. As time goes on, you save more and more money and we can kind of ignore the left-hand side of the graph because that's negative time. We're not gonna be subtracting money out of our bank account as we go this way because uh, we're not, you know, we're not, um, um, we're not concerned with negative time. But if you, if you really wanted to interpret what this means, it means that time zero, the balance in her account goes up higher. But if you go one week in the past or two weeks in the past, she had less, probably had less and less money because presumably she was saving all of this time. She has forty dollars in her bank at time zero, and she keeps gaining more money. If you go backwards in time, she probably has less money in her account. That's what it's really telling you. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. It says a grocery store received a shipment of 900 kilograms of potatoes. On average, they sell 25 kilograms of potatoes every day. Write an equation for the remaining kilograms of potatoes left, Y, a certain number of days after receiving the shipment, X. How many kilograms of potatoes will be left after 10 days? So basically the number, the variable Y is, is basically how many potatoes I currently have. And the Number X, or the variable X, is how many days after the shipment came um, do, do I, am I looking at, basically. And we know that as time goes on, we're going to have less and less potatoes because it says right here, we get a shipment of potatoes, but we sell 25 kilograms a day. So as time goes on, we expect the amount of potatoes we have to go down because we're cooking them and we're serving them, all right? So what would be an equation for this situation, right? So Y is the number of kilograms of potatoes left and it's gotta be equal to some, some sort of math. And it says we have a shipment of 900 kilograms. So basically you start out with a shipment on the truck, you get 900 kilograms. This is gonna end up being our initial condition in a second. What is the value when we start the, start the whole thing? Basically 900 kilograms. But as time goes on, we start selling these guys and we sell them, meaning we subtract them at a rate of 25 kilograms every day. And X is the number of days into the future we're going. So you see this represents the amount of potatoes I have. I started with this, and on day number one, I take 25 kilograms away. On day number two, I take 50 away. On day number three, I take 75 away, and so on. This will always be the current amount of potatoes I have. We don't like to leave uh, equations like this. We wanna write the slope part first, negative 25 times x plus 900. This is the equation of this line that represents this situation, all right? Now we ask ourselves, at the end of the problem, how many kilograms of potatoes will be left after 10 days? So now we wanna say, let's go fast forward and let's let X, the number of days, equal to 10 days in the future. Then I will have negative 25 times 10 plus 900. You can think of it as 900 minus this. And this is gonna be, what is this here? Minus 250 plus 900. And then what you're gonna have here is when you take 900 minus 250 or negative 250 plus 900, however you wanna think about it, you're gonna get 650 kilograms left or remaining, right? So this is the final answer for how much we have after 10 days. So you can see that we started with 900 from the shipment and then after 10 days we have this much left. So whereas in the previous problem, the graph was going up and to the right because things were getting bigger as I was saving money, we expect this graph to be a negative slope situation because everything is going down as time goes on. So let's do a quick little sketch. It's not gonna be beautiful. It's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna be accurate. That's okay. Sketches are great because you, know, you just wanna understand the situation. What is the y-intercept of this graph? It's 900. That means the scale is huge. You know, 100, 200, 300, somewhere up here is 900. Okay, just put a, a, a mark somewhere, way, way up here. 900, put a dot there. What is the graph of the, the slope of this thing? Negative 25, that means 25 units down. You can think of negative 25 as 
negative 25 over one. We're gonna rise down 25 units and then over one. So I can't draw it to scale, but it's gonna go down 25 units and then over, and then down 25 more units and then over and so on. And so you're gonna have some kind of straight line that does something like this, right? So the initial condition when time hasn't really started yet is I have the 900 kilograms of potatoes. That's my initial condition. But as time goes on, then of course I have fewer and fewer kilograms of potatoes and it's going down at a constant rate because every single day I'm losing the same amount of potatoes, 25 kilograms every day. That's why it forms a line. And so we can see that it's gonna go down something like this. And the intercept is here and the slope is here and it's a negatively slanted situation because everything is going down with time. All right, problem number three, it says Kyle is assembling back to school kits. Each kit contains a pencil, a notebook, and an eraser. Pencils cost 25 cents, notebooks cost $1.50 each, and erasers cost 10 cents each. Write an equation to show the total cost Y uh, of creating a certain number of kits, X. <clears throat> so, and then we wanna make a prediction, how much will it cost to, for Kyle to make five of these kits? So we wanna write an equation that predicts the total cost y of these things. And it just says right there, they use the variable y for the total cost. But we're, we're trying to make it in terms of how many kits are made, but every single kit has a pencil, a notebook, and an eraser. And the actual pencils cost 25 cents, so we can write that as 0.25 times the number of kits I make. But I'm gonna to add to that the cost of the notebooks, which are $1.50. Again, times the number of kits I've made. And also the erasers are 10 cents times the number of kits made. So you see, if I make one kit, then X is one. And basically I add the cost of one of these pencils, one of these notebooks, and one of these erasers. But if I double the number of kits, then all of these numbers double, and then the price of the whole thing doubles. So now this doesn't look very friendly, but then we remember our rules of algebra. When you have terms with the same variable and different coefficients, we can add them together. It's called combining like terms. As long as the variables are the same, we can do that. And the, and the exponent on the variables are also the same as well. So what do we have? 150, 160 here, and then 170, 185. So $1.85, so a $1.85 times X. This is the equation of the situation here where X is the number of kits I make and Y is the number of dollars the, all of those kits cost. So now we say we're gonna let the number of kits equal to how many? Five. So what happens? 1.85 times five. And if you multiply this out, this works out to $9.25. That's the total cost if we allow ourselves to make five kits. Now again, I don't want to draw you know, a really fancy plot, make it beautiful or anything like that, but we still should try to make a little sketch. All right, 1.85x, what's the y-intercept? Well, it's not written here, but you have a plus zero. So really the y-intercept is right through the origin. So it's not up or down, it's right, right here in the middle. And 1.85 is the slope, that's rise over run. So it goes, uh, if, you, if you want to think about it as, here's one and here's two and here's one, then it goes up 1.85, not quite to two, and then it goes over one. So because you just rise over run, and this is over the number one. And then I can draw uh, kind of a, a line that goes through there as best I can. Now, does this make sense? What it's telling us is that as time, if I make more kits, I have to spend, they cost more money. And it, it costs more money in a linear fashion because for every additional kit I make, it costs me an extra $1.85. Also, the y-intercept goes through the origin. That's my, kind of my initial condition. And that means if I don't make any kits at all, then the cost is zero, which makes sense. It's a different situation than in our bank account balance, right? Because here, we said she started with $40. That means the initial condition was not zero. But here, when you're making goods, if you don't sell any goods, then the initial condition is that there's no cost because you, know, you haven't made anything. And so this has to go straight through the origin, but as we make more and more of these, it costs more and more money, according to this graph. Okay, let's take a look at our final problem. It says, Natasha is training for a marathon. 
So far this month, she's ran or walked 25 kilometers. Every time she trains for the rest of the month, she'll run three kilometers and walk one kilometer. Write an equation to show the number of kilometers that she's trained, run or walk. We call that uh, Y, the total amount, given the number of times she trains for the rest of the month X. And then we have a separate question. How many kilometers will she have run or walked if she trains six more times this month? So basically we need to write an equation for the variable Y, which is the total number of miles that she trained, right? Now it says so far she's ran 25 kilometers. That's in the bag. That's my initial condition because that's what I've already done. But then going forward from here, it says right here in the next sentence, every time she trains for the rest of the month, she'll run three kilometers, 3x, because this is the number of times she's going to do it in a month, and she's also going to walk one kilometer. You see? And so you have the initial amount that she's already trained. Every time she goes out to train, she runs three and she walks one. They're the same variable here because if I, run, do, if I train one more time, I'm going to run three and walk one. And I want to add these guys together to get the total. But since these are like terms, I can just add them. 25 plus 4x. And I want to flip it around because when I write a line, I always want mx plus b. 4x plus 25. This is the equation of the line that represents this situation. Right? And then the question says, if I train six more times this month, how many uh, kilometers will I go? So we're going to let x equal to 6, and then y will be 4 times 6, because x would then be equal to 6, plus 25, 24 plus 25 is 49 kilometers total, if I train 6 more times, right? So again, let's do a quick sketch. We don't do it for every single problem, but let's do a quick sketch here. What is the y-intercept of this guy? Uh, here it is at 25. I'll just put 25 somewhere in the graph. I don't want to put all the tick marks. And the slope is 4. That means rise over run. I go up 4 and then over 1. So it's going to be some kind of steep curve, something like this, some kind of steep line, something like that. I'm not doing a good job of rise over run and making it to scale. I just want you to get the idea that basically as uh, the number of training sessions go up throughout the month, as we go this far, more and more training sessions, then of course the total amount of kilometers trained goes up. But even if we don't do any more training sessions, we start out with 25 kilometers in the bag, already done. This is our initial condition. That's why it's the y-intercept. Basically, the y-intercept of a graph is always going to be your initial condition. That's what happens at time zero. That's what you've done already before anything else happens. So these are all a little bit different flavor. Hope you learned something from this and learning how to write down the equation uh, and draw a picture of it. Uh, to help you understand what the situation is. Solve all of these yourself. Follow me on to part two. We'll continue to build your skills. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.